So today we're going to be talking about braking, braking radiation that is, Bremsstrahlung radiation is the word in German, and so braking radiation or Bremsstrahlung radiation and characteristic radiation, those are the two ways that x-rays are generated in a diagnostic x-ray tube. Hey guys, I'm Brian Nett from HowRadiologyWorks.com. We have bite-sized content that's of interest for those in the radiology field, especially radiologic technologists. If that sounds good, click below on subscribe and then click on the little bell icon so you can get notified when we release new content. So specifically today we're going to be talking about how does an x-ray tube work in terms of the actual physics mechanisms. So we know from our x-ray tube overview that in an x-ray tube you take electrons you, you get those electrons by boiling them off of what's called a filament, similar to an old-fashioned light bulb. But you're boiling a coiled wire, you're heating a coiled wire so that you boil electrons off, and then you pull them towards an anode. The electrons come off the cathode, you pull them towards an anode, they interact with the anode by just pounding, pounding into the anode. And then what happens when they pound into the anode? You have these two reactions, or interactions rather, that we're going to talk about Bremsstrahlung or breaking radiation and characteristic radiation. We're going to talk about those reactions and how those two reactions, if you know those two, how the actual spectrum is going to make sense. So if you're used to seeing an x-ray spectrum where you have like a curve and you have a couple peaks in that curve, that's going to make sense to you after watching all the way to the end of this video. And we'll see you right now. So this is an example of a x-ray tube where the electrons come out here. They come out of what's called the cathode. They hit the anode. So there's a stream of electrons coming, bombarding this heavy metal. And then the x-ray photons will be coming out in this direction. But the two characteristic interactions that we're going to talk about are called Bremsstrahlung and then characteristic radiation. And we're going to go through those two and how an x-ray spectrum looks and why it looks that way. So the first and the most important is Bremsstrahlung because most most of the x-rays generated in a diagnostic x-ray tube are from Bremsstrahlung radiation. So this here is showing part of the, that heavy metal. So for instance, tungsten is frequently used as the heavy metal that we're going to hit with electrons in order to generate our photons. So it'll have a nice big nucleus, right? And then also a very big electron cloud. This is just a schematic, if you remember from your high school classes, that we have our nucleus, and then these are the inner shells. And then as we go, the outer shells are less tightly bound in the nucleus. So the electrons that are coming in, it's possible for electrons to experience what's called Bremsstrahlung or breaking radiation. And I'll just show that again really quickly. But essentially, it's interacting between the electron and the nucleus and the electron is getting its momentum changed very quickly so it's going in a very different direction than it was incident and in order to conserve the momentum an x-ray photon is ejected and this is happens in such a way that um, if the electrons comes out in this direction then the x-ray photon will come out in the opposite direction so this can happen in a very continuous manner such that electrons could interact just a little bit namely they could get um, steered just a small amount by the nucleus and then in that case very low energy x-ray photon would be emitted or the electron could basically deposit nearly all of its energy into that x-ray photon in that case we can see that there is going to be a spectrum of possible energies that can get generated and it's a smooth relatively continuous spectrum of possible energies that can get generated via Bremsstrahlung radiation then characteristic radiation is the other thing that can happen so you have your electrons coming in again the same instance that we talked about but now instead of interacting with the nucleus in this case it's an electron electron interaction so that electron that's coming in it knocks out an inner shell electron and that electron from the neighboring 
shell will drop down and if we remember from our chemistry what happens is there's energy that's gained or an energy difference rather that needs to get compensated for such that um, the photon that comes out its energy will be exactly the difference in energy levels between the two shells so in this case the L shell and the K shell so it's only going to be one given energy and you could also envision one from the M shell to the L shell so you could have one or two given energies and for characteristic radiation it's called characteristic because they all have that same shared characteristic that's the one given energy again this is a demonstration of from the M shell uh, to the L shell so that another characteristic energy so if we had just bremsstrahlung radiation our x-ray spectrum if it wasn't filtered if it didn't have to pass through anything our x-ray spectrum would look something like this be something like a straight line where at lower energies we have more x-ray photons and at higher energy we'll have fewer x-ray photons because it's less likely to have those interactions where the electron transfers all of its energy to a photon but then in reality what ends up happening is we start with something like this and then we have filtration we have to pass through the glass window and then we also usually have additional filtration of the x-rays before they get to the patient so those lower energy x-rays are preferentially attenuated so you get something that would look like this if you have just bremsstrahlung plus filtration then if you add those characteristic peaks you get something that looks like this so when someone shows you a plot that's energy and the number of photons and talks about this fancy thing called the x-ray spectrum you can just remember that it's not really that complicated there's just two fundamental things that are happening one is that bremsstrahlung and the other is the characteristic radiation so we talked about bremsstrahlung and characteristic radiation and those are the mechanisms by which x-rays are generated that are used for diagnostic x-ray imaging and diagnostic CT imaging. Okay. Thanks again for watching. Again, this has been Brian Nett with HowRadiologyWorks.com. Let me know what your favorite part about the x-ray generation process is. Is it the boiling off of the electrons or electrons hitting the heavy metal or what? Uh, just the fact that bremsstrahlung is a pretty cool word. So also head on over to HowRadiologyWorks.com backslash x-ray gen. That's x-ray and then g-e-n for x-ray generation. You can download a PDF cheat sheet that has just in one place the information that you need about x-ray generation and the x-ray tube. Again, thanks again.